raising money for children with cancer, walking, Googling, <coughs> tweeting, Facebooking, I guess you would, um, writing books, um, journal writing, play dates um, for your five-year-old son, dinner parties, and dreaming of publishing your first soon-to-be-finished novel. <coughs> Other interests, public speaking and voiceovers, walking, motivational CDs and uh, text by Anthony Robbins, uh, politics, human uh, relationships and dynamics, presentation skills, travel, marriage, motherhood. Have you left anything out? <laughs> um, I for a Yeah. <laughs> So, um, Diana, um, her burning desire is to win an Academy Award for Best Screenplay Adaption of her own work. Oh, yeah. And if she wasn't doing what she was doing now... <laughs> if she wasn't doing what she would be doing now, she would be singing in a blues band and flying a plane. I think you'd better speak to um, Joanne on that one. Um, something nobody knows about... That's the plane, it's not the singing. Something that uh, you may not know about uh, Diana is that she loves... Uh, she would love to have her own radio show. I guess there won't be much talk back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I pass over to Diana. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Well, AdWord scored three votes and Keywords scored five votes. So the winner of today's presentation topic with a total of eight votes is... Ten tips on how to write copy for the internet. So the people have spoken, and I will deliver you 10 tips. It's not an exhaustive list, but it's the beginning. So you may have heard that to write for the internet, that you need to be brief, but that's important. Actually, what you need to be is concise. There's a difference between, between being brief and being concise. Brief basically is being short. Concise is saying much... Sorry, can we have a copy of these again? Um, I write it down. Okay. I haven't prepared copies and I'm not giving away my slide. <laughs> but yeah, write down tips if you want to keep these down. Um, yes, so basically, I've often related to something that has been attributed to three different people. It's a pretty well known saying. Sorry that it cuts off, I'm not sure what that's about. But it's so true. It takes longer to produce concise copy than it does to produce lengthy copy. So like I was saying with my mission statement, it started with lots and lots and lots of information. It took a very long time to get it down to three words, to three lines. And the same applies to your website. You need to say a lot of things, but you have to be concise. Some people have printed documents that they want to send to their web page. A lot of people have done this. They've just transposed what's their printed document and put it on the web page. If you are transferring information from print to web, I implore you to take time to reduce your text by at least 50%. And that doesn't mean reduce content. You've got to still have the points, but you've got to get rid of what doesn't belong on the web page. Break up your information for your website and make your information easy to find. And it's really important to write as you speak. The web is a really interactive interface and it encourages a conversational style. So when you're writing, try not to be abstract or highfalutin, try to write as you speak. And if you have trouble doing this, then speak. Get yourself a handheld mic and record yourself talking about the thing that you're passionate about, which is your business, your work, your life's work. Either talk to somebody or just go in a room and talk to yourself. And then play it back and listen for the words that you use when you're being conversational. Break up the text. Now, there's lots of ways to break up the text. There's lots of conventions that we can use. Bullet points are fantastic. I'll get these up because I don't want to keep... I was hoping to have a clicker today. I've lost mine. Never used it. I've lost it. You didn't ask me for a clicker. I should have, shouldn't I? I'm so silly. I'm putting up your data projector. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so break up the text. Um, I don't know if you've ever done this, but the bullet points are great. 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 Bullet points are just puts it on the side a little bit. So use it. Like pepper and salt, not too much. Captions are fantastic. That's a great way to break up your text. If you put a testimonial with a caption.
caption or you quote somebody that's relevant to what you've got on your page, it engages the audience in the conversation. Who said that? What was that that they said? Do I agree with them? Who said it? If they've got weight, it adds influence to what you're writing. Tables and images form the same purpose for people who are visual, but I think they appeal to everybody. They break up the copy on your page, and it's the, the whole idea of a picture says a thousand words, and Kate's not in this, Kate knows. If you're really stuck for copy for tables and pictures, see Kate and get your web page designed with some images to help you communicate your message in a really concise way. And colour is so powerful. I've since found out after I chose orange as my colour for I speak, I train, I write, that orange is the colour for communication. Apparently bright green, like the green that Joanne's wearing, will encourage people to part with their money. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've got a shopping cart on your website, it's great to use a colour like, color like green, but make the words colourful too. And use subheads. Does everyone know what a subhead is? Have people seen the subheads? Subheads are used to break up your copy, or in this case, I'll show you them breaking up my copy. There's my lovely web page. Thank you, Jürgen. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, me. There's the subheads. <laughs> okay, so here's our heading. There's a subhead, and then there's more subheads, and they basically tell you what's going on in the paragraph. And you break up your information into paragraphs. You might have five sentences. I guarantee you, you can turn those five sentences into two or three sentences with a subhead. And more times than not, even though you put all your heart and soul into writing your copy, a lot of people won't read all the words on your web page. They will read the subheads. So make sure that the subheads make sense. They can really work to tell a story in their own right. Now, when you're writing, think about the voice that you use. Use the active voice, not the passive voice. An example of passive copy is leaking of the pool is prevented by heat-resistant tiles. Now, let's say you are someone who's selling heat-resistant tiles. If you want to turn this sentence into its active form, usually the word that's at the end of the sentence, if it's taken to the beginning of the sentence, will turn it into its active form. Heat-resistant tiles prevent the pools from leaking. Get to the point, you want to talk about your heat-resistant tiles, make it active, be direct, get to the point of what you're saying. And say what you mean. You don't have a lot of time when you have a reader that comes to your website. Web users are so fickle and they will click off as quickly as they click, as they, as quickly as they click on. So people shouldn't have to figure out what it is that you're saying. Don't be cute or funny or beat around the bush. Get to the point and say what you mean. And don't use abstract words. Abstract words are words that we often employ or use when we're writing to make ourselves sound like we're expert in our field, to make us sound more grand. What they actually do is distance the reader from the writing. And here's some examples of abstract words. I say don't say cessation when you can say stop. Don't say confidentiality when you can say secret. Secret is a beautiful word. It's used in marketing and advertising all the time. It's used in headlines all the time because it works. So we might say, I don't want to say secret, I want to be confidential. Confidential is okay. But confidentiality, it's starting to elevate the tone and distance the reader. You really have to get a conversation going. Don't say remuneration when you can say pay. Now there are exceptions to the rule. And there will be people who say, well, I need to use a certain kind of language for my client. I will just put it to you that if you work to keep your language concrete and avoid the abstract, you will create more of an interaction with your reader of your website. This is a tip that's come across, I've come across many times. People in marketing and advertising have told me they've heard this since the late 90s. And so I wanted to share it with you today. And once again, it's subjective, you may not agree. But when you're quoting numbers, always try and make the percentage or the total that you're referring to an odd number. And it's really easy to do. See what you think. Which is more believable? Or? <laughs> more impact. It makes it seem more real. So think about that. 
that when you're quoting. Some people tend to try and round the numbers off. Don't do that. And be specific. Vague copy just leaves your audience guessing what is it that you're on about. Try and keep it as clear as possible. Here's a lovely example of some vague copy. Adverse weather conditions will not result in structural degradation. A bit more abstract writing as well. Say what you mean. <laughs> Sometimes it really is that simple. And the final, this is going a lot quicker than what I've practiced. <laughs> the final point that I want to share with you that is really the most important point. It's to rewrite and rewrite and rewrite. Do not think you are going to get clever, concise copy in the first draft, because you're just not. And the first draft is for the rubbish bin. But that's something that's transformed my writing, when I think I'm writing for the bin. I'm forgetting about my audience. When I sit down to write, I'm just getting it out. Getting some body of information to work with. And then you go back and you rewrite, and you cut it down, and you start to edit it. And you look for the words. Where can I be more conversational? Where have I been a bit abstract? Can I make that more concrete? And write it again. And then when you think you've got it right, read it to somebody. See if it passes the mum test. Read it to your mother, or read it to your husband, or read it to your friend. If you've got a colleague or a client that you have a good relationship with, ask them what they think of your copy. Get their feedback. And then rewrite it again. And then when you think, that you've got the final piece of copy for your website, put it down and come back to it in 24 hours' time. And I guarantee you, when you come back to it in 24 hours' time, you'll say to yourself, I was going to post that. It still needs to be reworked. So they're my top 10 tips for writing copy for the internet. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you for voting. It really was pleasurable preparing presentation knowing that it's what a lot of you wanted to hear about. And um, just so you know, in terms of colour, I gave Kate that logo. That's my old business card that Libby's actually working on to improve now for my new one coming. But I gave Kate that.